there you go, Trek beating ETC. And, and my God, look, Scott Mance obviously on the warpath, trying to get to Roka. Quiet down over there. And, <laughs> and so, look, that is a big match. But now, this is what it's all about. It is our first, it's the team title match here. You got John Roka and Matt Nost, the champions, defending the titles against the Patriots. Look, this is a battle for bad guys. You got JTE, Snyder, who do you boo? You know, we have one of the best crowds I've ever seen here for a schmodown. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure that they're going to be cheering for anybody. We might just have a stream of booze raining down. I know. Down. It's going to be pretty crazy. I mean, look, these, the, throughout this entire event, you're seeing factions form the Four Horsemen, the Lion's Den. All this stuff is happening now. So the question is they're battling for superiority now inside of the Schmodown. And what a way to do it in the actual title match. Why are we poised to be the top contenders in the league? Is because we're literally two of the best players in the league. If you put us together, we're going to be the best. Don't you agree? I agree. I feel like I'm the Edelman to his Brady. Together, we're Gronk. Any two people, any two schmucks that want to show up, we're going to knock you down. That's what is going to happen every time. So go ahead and line them up, schmoes. Go ahead and line up whoever you want to, quote, unquote, dethrone us. They're going to go down. We're going to be holding on to these until we retire. You know, when somebody enters a game and they're truly great, the game doesn't just change, it changes to the opponents. We're gonna destroy you guys, we're gonna tear you to pieces, you're gonna be crying home. You work hard, you focus, things can happen for you, you can win. Kid, what you gonna do when top 10 runs wild on you? Whew. Well, 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 Matt. Here we go. Once again. Team Patriots. Another team that thinks they can come and take us out. We've been going through everybody like a buzzsaw. We knocked out the champions. Knocked them out. They didn't even make it to the fifth round. Now the Team Patriots come around talking all their mess, thinking they're the ones. Everyone thinks they're the ones until they face us. You know what you guys are looking at here? Besides 14 karat gold necklace and a lion mane's jacket? Champions. This guy right here is a buzzsaw. Killing people left and right. The guy to my right, he's had some bad, you know, some stuff go on. But now I'm back. And when I'm back, he's back. We've already formed the four horsemen. Bibiani, Burnett, Nost, Roca, the four. And now we're going to take care of the Patriots, put JT out of his misery once and for all. Smack Snyder in his face, it's gonna, not gonna be no knockout this time. The Four Horsemen, okay, Bibiani is part of this crew now. He won one match by getting all the questions right or whatever. He barely got Beverly Hills Cop. He pulled that out of his ass. But that's a fluke, okay? That's one match. I woke up, people were debating whether he's the Rookie of the Year over me. I'm the Rookie of the Year, and I'm going to prove it today, here, now, after Schmodown Spectacular. They call Bibiani the Beast. You're looking at the Beastmasters. I got a call last night from Harloff. He's like, hey. You guys, uh, do you fear Team Patriots? Fear. That's what I said. I started laughing. Please, that's like the viper fearing the mice. We're out. We're the predators, the apex, and we're coming for you guys, all right? That's fear. When you guys watch today, you'll see fear on the faces of JD and Snyder. A slight sweat across their brow, eyes twitching, nervously moving in their seats. That's fear manifesting itself. We're a team of lions amongst a team of jackals. Jackals knit pick little pieces here and there. The jungles rule the kingdom. We eat the prey. We are the lion's den. It's the four horsemen, and the code of that is of the apocalypse. Right. We're nothing short of a reckoning coming through to annihilate all of you. Anyone that dares step before the king and take a shot at the crown. We're going to take down top ten this match, and then we're coming after the whole four horsemen, because it's the apocalypse, baby, and we're bringing it. Goodbye to all of you. I don't even care about these two. I don't care about who's next. That's right. Because you guys are just a notch on the belt, a tally for the numbers, and they'll be singing songs about us, and you'll be lost to the ether of time. Four. Get into these teams a little let's bit. Let's it. see past the ugliness of each individual because for top 10, 
you got to give credit where it's due. They beat the crap out of us. They yeah. took us out in our own house. They took us behind the woodshed, pulled our pants down, and we don't want to tell you the rest. They have the Movie belts release dates. now. Yeah. But this is going to be a tough belt retention because they have a world of hurt coming in against them. All right, so here is the tale of the tape. You have the challengers, the Patriots, where you have strengths of classics, Arnie and Sly, and mispronouncing most things. I thought classics were Arnie and Sly movies, Christian. Um, and then you have the team top 10, the four horsemen, where you have Roca and Nost. 80s movies. Animation is a strength of Nost and basically annoying me. Some animated movies were made in the 1980s. Interesting tidbit. Christian, are ready you to ready go. to introduce these two teams? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown team championship match. They're cheering. Scheduled for five rounds. Ha. Introducing first, representing the Lion's Den with the record of two wins. No defeats and two knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, the number one ranked contenders, Jeff, the Insnider, Snyder, and Little Evil, J.C. Mark and Draco and Bobby Finstock. Oh my goodness, since that heel turn from Finstock when he turned on Makuga, now representing the Lions then, and Draco joining that team. That's right, they come out, either they're ready for business or they're about to miss their shift at Burger King. Let's see what happens. And their opponents, representing the four the horsemen, with a record of four the wins, one defeat, and two. Knockouts, ladies and gentlemen, they are the 2015 the Ultimate Schmodown semifinalists the and the reigning, the defending movie trivia Schmodown team champions, Mighty Matt Yo. Nose and the outlaw John Roca team top 10 who's coming down they have oh, walk man. out oh look at the beast wow. the horsemen are here and now here they are Matt Nose John Roca wearing the belts that we once represented the beast needs to be restrained Burnett trying to be classier here it seems like the four horsemen are already teaming up pretty well all right, so the beast has to be restrained. So they're getting the beast. All right, the crowd giving it to him here, Christian. Wow, the beast is not beast happy. Beast screaming at JTE. The beast is beast is screaming at JTE. They got to restrain the beast. The beast seems to be communicating that he actually likes them. He just has no other speed than deadly. Oh, he oh, just teabagged. Oh, man, he's teabagged. He's teabagged. Man. not legal in the showdown. All right, here we go. That was entertaining, to say the least. <laughs> Somewhat more of a spirit intro than what we got from Team Patriots. All Which right. style's going to pay off? It is the championship match. Five rounds for the championship. All right, top ten. You guys are the favorites. Mark, what's the rules of round one? Because it is another team matchup in round one. Each team member gets three questions from three different movie categories. The questions are worth one point. There is no stealing. There's no penalty for a missed question. However, you are not allowed to consult with your teammates during round one. Woo! Team top ten, you guys are the favorites. So would you like to answer questions first or second? First. All right. And now we move over to Team Patriots. Would you guys like to choose Category 1 or Category 2? Category 1. Category 1 for Very the Patriots. Cryptic. Category 1 there. All right, Team Top 10 from Category 2. Who's going first? I'm going to beat you so bad I'll put hair back on your head, JT. You understand All right, me? who's going first? I don't understand the we logic We don't even know that. what's under that hat. Who's going first out of you guys? I thought black shirts were slimming, guys. <laughs> I do like that insult. I do like that insult. Who is going first? Roka will be going first. Okay. In the category of fantasy sci-fi. Oh, crap. A magical board game hurls two brothers through outer space in which 2005 film? The outlaw might have. It's choked. gonna be a long day for the outlaw. Damn. Five. Oh, sorry. Five. Four. 
Zarutha or something. Uh, we were looking for Zathora. <laughs> so close. All right. Zarutha might be her sister. All right. In the category of famous directors, who was behind the camera for the Mel Gibson vehicle ransom? Ron Howard. That's correct. That is correct. Correct All right. answer. All right. In the category of rom-coms, what classic 1980s song do all of the characters dance to in 13 going on 30? Thriller. That's correct. Well, how did he know it that fast? Wow. All right. You got to ask him some questions. I got to thank you Jennifer very much. Garner now we move treasure. on. Who's going for a Patriots? I'll go Team first. Patriots. Who's going first? I will go first. The Insider Jeff Snyder is going first. And in the world of fantasy science fiction, name one of the three names given to the ravine featured in Back to the Future 3. I don't know. We would have accepted Clayton Ravine, Shonash Ravine, or Eastwood Ravine. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's going to be a long night there, uh, Jeff. Now we go to famous directors. Milos Foreman directed Woody Harrelson in what 1996 film? The People vs. Larry Flint. Give him a point. All right, there you go. Give them a point. And it's, now it's to tie Team like... Top Ten in the early going, rom-coms, short for romantic comedy. In the beginning of Sleepless in Seattle, Tom Hanks moves to Seattle from what city? New York City? It's a guess, and it's incorrect. We're looking for Chicago. Wow. Chicago. That's tough. All right, Matt Nost in the category of horror. What was the name of the second Omen movie? Um, Five, four, three, two. I have no idea. One. Damn it. We're looking for Damien the Omen 2. That's right. Damien, right. one of the kids' names. Yeah. All right. In the category of animated, Catherine O'Hara provides the voice of which character in The Nightmare Before Christmas? Five, four, three, two, one. Rose. Sally. Yep, Sally is correct. But that was by Four. Snyder, so it doesn't count. Uh, in the category of movie taglines, Oh Yes, There Will Be Blood is a tagline for a film in which horror franchise? Five. Four. Piranhas. Looking for Saw. Saw. Mm. Saw, Saw 2. A lot of blood in the Piranha All movies, right. too, though. Low scoring right. match. Now, JT has a chance to become the hero here with this round. It, RB3 cracking up really hard back there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. JTE, your question comes from the world of horror movies. Which star of the movie also directed the film Frailty? Bill Paxton. Wow, JTE, well done. JTE ties it up. JT ties it Christian, up. Christian, I believe that's the first time he's spoken into the microphone oh. in this match. He has. He's a very focused. He's I'm super only focused. Talking answers Earned that. him a point. Right. Your yeah. next question is animated films. In Finding Nemo, what city did Nemo find himself in prison? A lot of whispering in the crowd. Five, four. Uh, Los Angeles. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and he's back to being JT. No oh, Sometimes it's good not to guess. No, so I close. No <laughs> uh, it is Sydney, Australia. I will I, tell you that I an Australian eventually made it to Los time. Angeles in yeah. Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles. Oh, All right, here we go. So your Second. final question, JTE. Yeah. Name the mid-90s film that features the tagline, cocktails first, questions later. That's how I live my life, Christian. Low scoring game here. Snyder, you say, I'm watching Snyder right now. <laughs> repeat no, repeat it one more time, mouth. please. It's quick. The mid 90s film that features the tagline, cocktails first, questions later. Five, four, three. Cocktail, I have no idea. Oh. Cocktail came out in 1986. Yeah, 86, I, I had no idea. So I... 88, excuse me, Scott Mance, we were looking for swingers. Swingers. Oh, shit. Swingers. Wow, Not a big drinker, tough. JT, and that one cost him. You know All right, here we go now. So round number two, low-scoring match here. Two 
two going into the second round. Unbelievable. All right, here we go. Sasha Pro Raver bringing it out with the wheel. Stay focused. All right. The joy on Sasha's face bringing that wheel it's out great. is something that all yeah. the children of the world should experience once in their lives. You each will get a spin at the wheel. Each team gets one spin. If you don't like the first category, you can spin again, use your mulligan. Each pie on the wheel corresponds to a movie category. You're going to get six questions from that category. Questions worth two points. If you don't like the question out on its face, you can go to multiple choice where the value of the question goes down to one point. Keep in mind. There is stealing from your opponents in round two, and you are allowed to consult with your teammates for each and every question. Top 10 is the favorite, and because it's tied, we're going to allow them to either spin first or second. All right, let's spin first. Spin first. Go, go ahead and spin, spin that Put wheel. Hands off the good wheel. spin. There's the spin, and it's going to land on Matthew, Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. Oh, wow, what do they do? What do they do? Kind of okay. the, the crowd wants them to take it. The crowd wants them to take it. Uh, five. Four. You want to swing it? Three. Yeah. Fuck it. We'll do it. Do Taking it. it. They're going with it. They're going to go with the crowd. All right, here we go. This is big. Wow. And Christian, a surprise here in the studio, here to ask the questions. Mr. Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> wow. I am. <laughs> Jamie Costa didn't show up. I, I am told he is not available. No, Jamie Costa did not show up. All we right. will still ask the questions. Here we go. Your ask, first question. Ask him in the voice. Though. As a team, which film did Matthew star in that was based on a John Grisham novel? Lincoln Lawyer. A Time to Kill. That's true. Snyder Jeff steals Snyder. Wow. That's a two for That's Jumped a two. all over That's it. That's a two. Wow, look at that. Jumps right over That's it. That's right. Jeff Snyder. Very Carmelo Anthony. Not even no. looking at his teammate before nope. taking the shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> RP3 is the best. Now we go on to your second question. Back to you, Team Top Ten. Who played Matt's mother in the romantic comedy, Failure to Launch? Kathy Bates. Two points for Team Top Ten. There you go. Married to Terry Bradshaw, I believe. Mm -hmm. Shows his ass in that movie. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Your third question. Matthew stars with Skeet Ulrich, Ethan Hawke, and Vincent D'Onofrio as brothers in which Western film? That Western coming to bite Matt Nosen. Shit, yeah, it's on the tip of my head. Oh, my God. It's multiple like full Terry Bradshaw choice. ass in that movie. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. No, you said multiple choice. 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 You're going to get multiple choice for one point. Fuck. Is it A, Posse? No. B, Wallace? No. C, High Country? No. D, The Newton Boys? Yes. The Newton Boys. All right, there you go. One point. That's considered a western. Yeah. How is that a western? It's about train robbers. Yeah, it's about train. Yeah. Robbers. They're robbing cars. banks in the uh, old Doesn't west. Doesn't matter. Matthew McConaughey is in it. It's all right. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. All right. What is Matt's occupation in the comedy Ghosts of Girlfriends Past? Oof. <laughs> this is my yeah. All right. Let's do multiple choice. Yeah, multiple choice. Multiple choice. Is he a celebrity photographer? B four star chef? C, Wall Street magnate. D, televangelist. Can you say the choices again? Is it A, celebrity photographer? B, four-star chef. C, Wall Street magnate. D, televangelist. Okay. Five. Photographer. Give him a point. That's it. Wow. Give him a point. Good point. All right. All right. That's right, ladies. That's right, ladies. Your penultimate question in the Matthew McConaughey category. What was the first film that saw Matt get nominated for an Oscar? Multiple well, choice. Ooh. Is it A, Dallas Buyers Club, B, Mud, C, A Time to Kill, or D, Killer Joe? Five, four, Three. Dallas Buyers Club. Give him another wow. point. Wow. And you know, hey, this Jeff. is what hey, Team Jeff. Top we Ten does we well. It. They're thinking their way around a Matthew yeah. McConaughey category. It's good. I mean, look, they're, they're not letting the steals happen. Your last question. Which actress co-starred with Matt in the adventure film Sahara? Penelope Cruz. There John Roca All right. for Team Top 10 That's gets it. two Latina more points. Motherfucker. All right. So going in so to the Patriots spin, it's 9-4. Five-point lead here. 
Patriots need a big round two. All right, yeah. JT, you going to spin that wheel? Yeah, Give it a good one, please. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right, decent spin. All right, solid spin about Roka speed, and I'd say. Hands on. Movie release dates. Movie release dates. Okay. We'll spin again. Spin away from that. They are uh, running so, off. If you were up here with Quiet. me. And it lands on animated, animated movies. That's not, that's not great for JT. Wow. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, wow. This is a st Matt Nose licking his chops over Christian, there. Christian, this is where the match could really take a sour turn. Right. All right, here we go. Animated. All right. Who voiced Chicken Little in the 2000s? Zach Braff. Wow. All right, Zach. All right. Christian, you got to wonder when JT is going to show up. I know. Yeah. In the category. All right, sorry. Question two. The Phony King of England is a song from which Disney movie? Multiple choice. Is it A, Robin Hood? B, The Sword in the Stone? C, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks? D, Pocahontas? Five, four. Robin Hood? That's correct. Damn. Give right. him a point. All right. <laughs> Question three. In Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Flint Lockwood creates a food palace slash castle for his love interest, Sam Sparks. What is the food palace slash castle made of? That would be Jello. That's correct, JT. Yes. Tie games. You know, if it's a question about Jello castles, JT is going to get it right every time. <laughs> All right. JT is going to build one after this Ignore match. That. All right. Got it. All right, question four. Who directed the animated film Happy Feet? George Miller. The lead, 11 to 9. The Patriots are up. Yeah. Question Back to Rain Man Snyder over there. Question five. In The Little Mermaid, Ariel asks Scully about her human treasures, one of which he says is called a dinglehopper. What actually is this item? Multiple choice. Is it? Multiple choice. Is it A, a pipe? B, a sextant? C, a fork? D, a pocket watch? C. That's correct. A fork. I knew it. I just All right, your final it. question here. What? I have, I have a question, One uh, real quick question. Could you guys look any more defeated over there? Whoa, oh, look at that. Just talking sweetheart. smack already. Sweetheart, it's yeah. only the second round, sweetheart. Yeah. All right, here we go. We'll call, sweetheart. Question six, where do Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore, and Piglet live? Wait, sorry, repeat the question. Where do Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore, and Piglet live? Yeah, we're gonna do multiple choice. Is it A, shirt- A sigh hunches sigh over the crowd. The crowd. <laughs> Is it A, Sherwood Forest, B, 100 Acre Wood, C, Enchanted Forest, D, High Forest? We're going to go with A. That's incorrect. B. B. That's correct. All right. Here we go. So the 100 Acre Wood. Mark, here we go into round number three. Please explain to the audience how it works. The way people love to call it the betting round, and why not? Because each team is going to be wagering a point value from one to three points. You cannot wager over three points. You actually do not have to wager any points if you do not want to. You're going to get the wheel spun from the team in the lead, which is the Patriots. From whatever that category gives them, there's going to be one question. You get the question right, you earn the amount of points you bet. If you get it wrong, you lose the amount of points you bet. All right, so the Patriots, you guys are in the lead. Spin the wheel for the category. There's a spin. The, the crowd seems to like it so Inverted. far. Opponent's choice. Opponent's Ooh. choice. Ooh. choice. That's our choice. They can choose whatever one they want. That's right. So, Christian, now becomes a question. What does top ten feel the most confident yeah, in? That, that's true. So what are they going to pick? This is big because then they're going to have to bet on their points. At. Is it going to be what they're the most confident or what maybe they think that a weakness is for Team Patriots? True. Guys, let's do Tim Burton. All Show right, five, up. four, three, two, one. What, romance? Romance. 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 They're wow. going with romance. Do you guys know anything about that? Wow. Ask your, ask your you wife. Don't. Ask your wife, Snyder. Oh, oh wow. I don't have oh, a wife. Man. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So please write your point. How many points are you going to bet? At Max is three. All right. Put them down there. I'll give them to Sasha, please. Sasha's going to take the points. Sasha, just make sure she let's see. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. So no, that's pretty good. I just make sure that the names are on there. Pretty good. Okay. Okay, great. Um, perfect. Okay. 
All right. All right. All right. Here's the question. Who stars opposite Humphrey Bogart in the 1942 romantic classic Casablanca? Big sigh from the audience there. Okay, so they both bet. Two points. Top ten bet two points. Patriots bet two points. Champion, uh, excuse me, the challengers. The name? Us. Yep, show us the name. Ingrid, Ingrid Bergman. Bergman. All right, and... The same. All right, so there you go. So the two more points for both of them, that brings up the score two. That is correct. 14-12. The Patriots are still in the lead. And we get to the dreaded speed round for buzzer. Sasha Pearl Raver will be monitoring the speed round here. That's right. Whoever puts their hand on the buzzer first and makes a noise come out of it gets to answer the question first. We're going to be monitoring as close as we can the four simpletons that are on the stage hitting their buttons. Now, keep in mind, you cannot consult with your teammate once you buzz in. It is your question and yours alone if you are fortunate enough to be the first one to buzz in. If you get a point correct, Stop it. you guys earn a point. If you guys miss the question, you lose a point. All right, yes, all right, here we go. In Who Framed Roger Rabbit, what is the name of the all animation city? Toonland? That is incorrect. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. That's incorrect. They lose right, a point. They lose a point. There was Toon Town. Oh, Toon Town. Town. 13 Toon 12. Town. All right. Christian, I don't know that I've ever seen more classic JT than in that first answer. Right. What did he say? Toon Land? Toon Land. All right. You know? Toon Land was his answer. All right, here we go. Your next question in the speed round The Green Mile is based on a story by whom? That was real Stephen King. That's correct. One point. Nice One point. Tied game. Tied game. We are now tied. Your third question. Who played James Bond in the film Thunderball? Roger Moore. Ooh, incorrect. That is incorrect. Oh. Oh. And they lose a point. Sean Connery. Shit. Yeah, Sean Connery also played James Bond. Yeah, so they're 13-12. Uh, the Patriots are back in the lead. How many Infinity Stones, Matt? Yeah, right. suck it. Right. Name Let's the go. film with the following characters. Stork. Hoover. One, two, three. Kung Fu Panda. Incorrect. Bandit. Looking for Animal House. All right. Thir animal House. 13, 11. And the final one. What Disney animated film features the song Just Around the River Bend? They can't consult. They're they consulting. Yeah, consulting. That, 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 consulting. They can't answer. You, you, can, you can't. You, you cannot answer. For, that you is got, correct. You guys have five seconds. Five, four, I don't three. Yeah, I don't want to take a guess. Okay. Answer was Pocahontas. Oh. Pocahontas. All right. 13-11. Going into the final round. Christian, the, the crowd. If, they, if you guys Christian, act like the that was a little mermaid or something. Enough, it's Pocahontas. The fact that they cannot get an animated question to go is really pissing no. this crazy crowd yeah. of people Clark, we have off. Clark Wolf is going to challenge all of these people. And this, a fun right? fact, Pocahontas actually originally from Toon Land. So this is it. <laughs> This is it. This is the championship round. What's it all comes down to this, the fifth round. Score? 13-11. The Patriots are up by two. You guys, you're going to choose between 25 categories. The contestants will pick three numbers, and randomly these categories will appear. One for a one-pointer, th excuse me, the three for three-pointer, and then the final five for five points. All right. What do you guys want from one to 25, Patriots? Yeah. Wait, who's yeah. Patriots? This is the hard part where you have to Five, give nine, us numbers. Four. Oh. Patriots. All right, all right, all right. Four, 12, 17. Four, 12, okay. 17. Top 10. Okay. Uh, uh, 14. 23? 14, 23. Sure. Seven. Top 10 is up first, category 14. I believe they said 14. They did. 14? You say 14? 14, okay, 23, okay. and 7. All right. 14. All right, so the category of famous directors. Who's going to go? One pointer. You're going to go. For the one pointer, who directed It's a Wonderful Life? Uh, Frank Capra. That's correct. One point. 13. One point. Comes to the three pointer. Big uh, man, three pointer. Big point? three. Yeah, yeah, one point. This, one is point. Is, this is the three pointer right here. In order to take the lead. All right, in the category of drama. Matt Nost, William H. Macy 
plays quiz kid Donnie Smith in this 1999 ensemble drama? Can you repeat the question? William H. Macy plays quiz kid Donnie Smith in this 1999 ensemble drama. Good old Donnie, huh? Boogie Nights. Wow, close. Incorrect. Magnolia. 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 So it comes down oh, to close. the five-pointer. Oh, wow. wow. If top ten misses the five-pointer, the Patriots are the new team no champions. No pressure, boys. All right. You, you picked number seven in the category of holiday films. Oof. Which actor played Ebenezer Scrooge in The Muppet Christmas Carol. Michael Caine. That is correct. Wow. All right. So yes. it is now 17-13. 17-13. The, the Patriots have a yeah. good chance here to win the titles if they can get at least two of these questions correct. And this could help because if they get this one, they would only need a three-pointer to tie. All right. Here we go. Disney movies. Who's going? Uh, we got five. Four, three. I'll go, I'll go. All right, JT. Toonland. And Christian, the category is Disney movies. You got to pray for them that it's not an animated question. <laughs> what was the name of Jasmine's pet tiger in Aladdin? Mm. I like to don't point look out. at him. I don't. I have no idea. Cuba, Cuba, Cuba. It was not Cuba. Looking for crowd. Yeah. Who knows it? <laughs> Cooper Roger, it is, Rich. It is right, Roger. There you go. Roger. All right. All right. So. Oh, of course. Roger. Here we go. Jeff Snyder now. Cool. Christian, all of a sudden, all the pressure rests on Jeff Snyder's shoulders. They need to get this yeah. one correct. If they miss it, they will be able to consult on the five-pointer for the win. And we're down four right now, right? It's 13, down four. 17. So this question really doesn't matter. It, well, it no. does as far as points, as far as leader, as far as your overall yeah, stats. Yeah, yeah. I'll take it. There you go. It doesn't matter. Your category is Tim Burton. In the Nightmare Before Christmas, what was the name of Jack Skellington's pet? The crowd has now scored 27 points. <laughs> <in this laughs> That's good. Five, four. I'm going to make Roka my pet after this two, next question. One. You're not even answering. All right. The answer was zero. The answer was zero. Oh, wow. The beast screaming at the top of his lungs. All right. All right. All right so this is it. It comes down all the marble. to the five-pointer. Come on. All right. This is big. If the Patriots hit the five-pointer, they're the new champions. If, top t if they miss it, top ten keeps the titles. Here we go, Mark. Ladies and gentlemen, for the five-point category question, which you may consult on, and for the victory, your category is animated movies. I'm kidding. It's totally not animated movies. <laughs> totally not animated movies. It is not animated movies. Uh, get back, your category. Get back, get back. For five points and the win, your category is crime films. Okay. Okay. Yes. Your question for the win. What veteran actor plays the father of Joaquin Phoenix and Mark Wahlberg in We Own the Night. <laughs> Heated debate Five, going on. Four, three, oh, shit. two, Go. one. Robert Duvall. And your winners! And the new <laughs> movie! Trivia Schmodown! Champions of the World! Little Evil! Danny Insider! Jeff Snyder! It is absolute chaos in the studio right now. Absolute chaos shocking the world! The Lions Den wow. celebrating with the new winners wow. of the team championship, Holy grabbing shit. the belt from Team Top 10. You know, Christian, it is absolute bedlam right now. A very, I don't want to say well-played match, but an wow. evenly played match for sure. I i mean, the studio was shocked. I am shocked. Jeff Snyder was shocked at the last second, taking the belts from top 10. JTE is going to go home and die now. This is the 
first time he has ever tasted gold. This is a long time coming for JTE. Unbelievable stuff here. Uh, they are going to talk to both the new champions and the former champions, Sasha Pro Raver. God help us. We've got Finstock here and your new champions. Come on, Team Patriots. Hold on. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Just as I predicted, championship belts. Now, JT's been on a losing streak. Everybody says that. But that's because he didn't have me in his corner. Once he has me in his corner again, obviously they're sitting back wearing under hardware. What a great match. Uh, look, here's the deal. We knew we were going to do this. They knew we were, they were going to do this. Roka and Nost knew they were going to do this. Wait, I have a really important question. Why are you here? You didn't help. I feel like this microphone should go right over here to In Snyder. Because Jeff Snyder carried this team to victory. We, Bye -bye. Uh, I think, it, yeah, it was a team Listen, effort. No, Total JT team effort. Land e. I love JT. JT came up with some great answers today. Ingrid Bergman in Casablanca yeah, was one that You didn't know that? Mind. It slipped my mind. Whoa. JT was awesome. All right. Good for you, man. Well, how do you guys feel? I mean, that was, it was a single point victory. That was, did you know the answer? Because I think you were messy. We are on cloud nine right now. Okay, let me tell you how that last question went down. JT and, and I huddled up. I knew it was either James Kahn or Robert mm -hmm. Duvall. Mm -hmm. and, and as I turned away from JT, as the, as the clock w wound down, I said, I'm going to say James Kahn. And I turned to the mic and just gut impulse said Duvall. You must have been surprised, yeah. right? I, I, it was literally between those two names. And... I always told him, go with what your, your first gut reaction was, because initially he said James Caan. Right. And this happened to me. I lost because I said the accused when I knew. No, I said it was uh, Sansa Lambs when I knew it was, the, it was accused. the accused. I second guessed myself. Right. So when he said that, I said, go with James Caan. If you're second guessing yourself, because I honestly didn't know it. And then he just turned around and said Robert Duvall. And I literally locked eyes with Christian Harloff, waiting to hear the words, new champions. Oh and when and he, he uh, did, he did a great and job announcing the match. But uh, but yeah, like I, I think that we proved we got we had some tough categories today, tougher than them. I would have killed for Matthew McConaughey, yep. but I think we did pretty good with animation oh, as far as God. it went. Oh dear God, it's back. Before that okay, gets so uh, before this disrupts us again, here's my question for you guys. Yes, Roca is already talking about a rematch. Oh God, I'm sure Are he is. He's talking a lot. Do you want a rematch? I mean, I know you like fondling this thing, but how uh, do you feel about putting it back on the line? Do you feel prepared listen, for that? Finstock, you're not part of the team. I am the manager. <laughs> Tell Nels to go watch Magnolia again, because I don't know how he missed that one. Come on, Boogie Nights? Uh, I, right, right then, I kind of knew we were going to win. I don't think that they get an automatic rematch. No, I think that they need to f earn their way back up. We just put them back at the bottom of the league, and they can crap and claw and scrap and fight. So who do you want? Who do we want, JT? I'll take whoever comes across. Yeah, honestly, I don't really care. We beat the best. We TKO. You, you know who I want? I'm gonna just going to say it. I want the Schmoes. I want Ellis, and I want Harloff. Because I'm sick and tired of them being ranked over me online. Gauntlet thrown down. I am here with Roca and Nost. Emotions running very high. Do you very guys? Low. Very yeah, very low. low. Yeah. Low. The emotions are low. Roca, right before we started, yeah. you were beating yourself up, yeah. saying Roger Moore. Come yeah. On. Yeah. That you know, it's just it's the way this these these things go. Like every little point counts. You never know what they're gonna get right, what they're gonna mess up, and you kick yourself when you mess up something as easy as Thunderball, which is Sean Connery. You can even see the poster, and I don't know why I said Roger Moore. So. But you, you just, guys had some other really really difficult answers that you were you managed to pull out. Yeah. My big question for you is, do you feel like Jeff Snyder was fucking? with you toward the end do you think he knew that all along or do you think that was just pure luck oh yeah I, I think he had two ideas in his head and he just picked the wiser of the two just the way he looked and his body language on there but at the same time he still got the question right uh, I think I lost it for us I missed so many effing oh, questions no. yes I did no. yes I did trust me I we've done this a, a, quite a few times and I know when I had a bad game and I had the worst game I've ever had in this. So thank you for at least making it competitive for us at the end there. Uh, if you guys think these clowns are going to hold on to the belts, please. Toon Land. Just tell yourself, Toon Land. Just keep repeating that to yourself. <laughs> well, Toon Land. Toon Land. We, I've said many times, JTE, sometimes when he's with somebody like a Finstock, he's the genius. When yeah. he's with somebody like Jeff Snyder, he's kind of the dead weight. Yeah. So now what happens? Do you guys want to take them on again? You've got the mountain of Mance that you need to climb. Yeah. Where do you guys go from here? Well, honestly, I think as, as the ones who just lost the belt, we should definitely be in a competition and be number one contenders next. I think we sh there should be a rematch clause in the contract where we get to take them on again because that was way too close, and we if Matt Nost 
is even three quarters way to kill them. So it's just like Matt's kicking himself, and I want Matt to get his uh, 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 what do you call it? Redemption. His redemption. His I want redemption? Matt to get his redemption. It was a I don't one want you feeling game, bad because you carried us so many times in this bullshit. So whatever's gonna game. happen, we're gonna take him. It's one point, and they barely got it on the last second. We're gonna see you guys again. All right, back yeah. to you. <laughs> No, come on. What do you got to say? I was going to say, for anybody that doesn't think this is real, this is, this is all scripted, trust me, I am going to be beating myself up until we get a shot at a rematch with those assholes, and they're going down. Tweet these guys some love. Tweet them some love. And for more love, back to you guys, Christian and Mark. All right, so how about that? We have brand new champions. Oh, my I God. I mean, it, Christian, you talk about, look, it, it's Christmas time. It's the holiday season. People are giving uh, gifts to one another and not. The fact that JTE, after the season he's had, one of the worst in sports history. Ever. ever. Getting to earn a belt. It is now a great redemption story. It's, it's huge. And I'm happy it's, for the it, little guy. It's, it's really big. Snyder also putting a stamp down that he's making a case for Rookie of the Year here. Um, so let's see what happens next. But look, that was one championship match. Yeah. Next, Roka's got to get right back in this thing right now and play and play Riley. But right coming up down the pike, we got you versus Merle. You got to get the hell out of here. I am gonna relieve myself of my duty commentating to get ready for dangerous Dan Merle. Best of luck to Roka to Riley. I look forward to defending my belt against either one of you idiots. Now I'm gonna throw here to both the Riley and Roka package here as we see exactly what's happening with these two. When we get back, we're gonna have John Campia joining me at the table. Wow. It's a good tweet. I'm gonna retweet that. Bam. Out to the followers. We ready yet? Not yet. Steven Spielberg. It's all in my head. You. All right, as we come back from that, oh my God, I'm excited about that match, obviously. And Mark Ellis, as he goes to prepare for his title match against Dangerous Dan Merle, I'm joined by John Campia, who's back. John, you competed in the uh, Inner Geekdom today. What a right. showing. How did that feel? I mean, an hour-long match. What a great match that was. That was far more fun than I thought it was going. And, you know, going into it, my pick was actually Robert Meyer Burnett. Yeah. To see the way he came back and that Hector was so, so good. good. And that Jeremy was so good. Ashley was so good. I was so good. But you know what? <laughs> the, the right guy won. The right guy won. What a comeback there at the end. It was a thrilling match to be a part and of. And so much drama happening since that went down. Oh. You have Robert Meyer Burnett joining the four horsemen, and Roca and Nost at that time were the team champions. That is no longer the case. You had the Lions Den formed by Finstock saying, <laughs> we're going to be a force here. And I was like, yeah, right. Goes out and gets Mark Andreco to join the team. Then the Patriots win the titles. What's going to happen next with these guys? We don't know, but it's all about this match now. You got Riley and Roca part two. I'm gonna be going to the Schmodown Spectacular in December. You can guarantee it. Put money on it. I want that title. I want that belt around my waist. What do they say? You don't spit into the wind. You don't step on Superman's cape. You don't mess around with the outlaw. Roka has probably the biggest mouth I have ever heard in my life. Come on, dude. Take the hat off, take the mask off, and use your blinders if you want. Put some earphones on. I don't care what it is. Put on your big boy shorts. Let's do this, John Roca. Everyone knows now. The Four Horsemen has been formed. Everything I said I was going to do, I've done except one thing. And that's to put a singles title around my waist. Riley, I beat you once. 
you smiley, go happy Superman guy who beat a bunch of tomato cans, beat a bunch of nobodies. You felt good till you faced me, and I went through you, and I'm gonna go through you again. Superman ain't gonna die just once, he's gonna die twice. Well, well, well. Look who's here. Let me guess. Roka. Roka is doing his Roka thing right now. You're gonna be cutting back and forth from me to Roka right now, and here's what you're gonna get preview. I'm Roka, look at me, I'm Outlaw Nation, I'm gonna beat the world, I'm gonna take everyone on, I'm gonna even take on the president, because he can't beat me, nobody can beat me. Roka, you've been beat. And now you're staring down the face of another person who's gonna beat you. And all the talk that you're doing, all the talk, it's time to end the talk. I don't have anything more to say because my facts, my trivia knowledge, everything speaks for itself. So go ahead, cut back. I ain't saying much anymore. It's time to play. That's it. What did I tell you guys from the beginning? What did I tell you from the beginning? That I wanted the title along the list. I take care of Riley. Whatever happens with Ellis and Merle, I get to take on that winner and take that belt and put her on my waist and become the true champion once and for all of the Schmodown. What I said I was going to do. Tonight, today, it ends for Riley. I go for the belt. So get ready. I have the power of four me. who are absolute powerhouses in this game. Each one of them could be wearing the championship belt around their shoulders right now. However, they're both also on a bit of a slump right now, especially John Roca at the moment. It's gonna be interesting to see which one of those guys can recapture that glory. Well, that's the craziest thing is as you look at Riley, even though they are coming, both him and Clark Wolf are coming off of that win against Real Rejects. Great Real win. Rejects had them on the ropes. Yep. And then, so Riley's gotta get out of his head. Riley has been just spurting out answers and he's, he doesn't go to multiple choice sometimes. He's gotta be that Riley we knew from 2004. Mm -hmm. John Roca, the question is, how is he going to handle this is this is five or ten minutes ago where he just lost the titles with Matt Nose. He takes losses hard. Is that going to be a factor going into this? Well, match? I talked to both these competitors just about two minutes ago prior to this match. John Roca, I'm going to tell you, he looked a little bit shaken, and that's something I've never seen John Roca look like right. before. Speaking to Mark Riley, first question was, "How does my hair look?" I'm not really <laughs> sure where to go beyond that, but he seems confident. All right, so here we go. There is the tale of the tape. You got John Roca, classics, biopics, and recovering from title losses and then you have Mark Riley who has superhero movies Star Wars movies and combing his hair and breaking combs <laughs> all right there you go so that is our tale of the tape this is our number one contender match ladies and gentlemen it's time for the movie trivia schmodown top contender match the winner of this match will be facing either Dangerous Dan Merle or Mark Baby Carrots Ellis for the championship next year. Introducing first. Representing Collider. Oh, that's different. He is the number three ranked contender with a record of six wins, two defeats, three knockouts, the 2014 Ultimate Schmodown winner and the former Ultimate Schmodown movie trivia champion of the world. Different entrance here. What an entrance by Mark Riley, classing up the place. Smooth, calm, and collected. Can he bring that to the match? Yes. And his opponent, representing the Four Horsemen, <laughs> with a record of four wins, two defeats, 
He is the 2016 Ultimate Schmodown finalist and the ranked number two contender. Ladies and gentlemen, the Outlaw John Roca. There he is. John Roca coming out with the lovely Miss Natasha. Oh, a little dance. A nice little dance there. I like it. And Natasha out there. Oh, look at that little shit. Oh, very nice. A calm, cool, collected outlaw here. Yeah, getting his spirits reoriented. Oh, Coming out to his classic outlaw. Okay, there you go. He's nice. ready to go. The outlaw. Oh, he's shaking the hand of Riley. That's oh, very now we different. know there's something wrong wow, with him. Wow, there's something wrong with. Oh, and he's wiped his hand off. Okay, so there, <laughs> that's that's the Roka we know. He's brought a novel for himself to read because oh, he really. The lambs. He does not think Riley is much competition. Wow, all right, all right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, round one works like this. The competitors will have six questions from six predetermined categories, each worth one point apiece. You cannot steal from your opponent. John Roca, you are the ranked number two contender. Would you like to go first or a second? Second. Second. Mark Riley, category one or two? One. All right, Mark Riley. All right, Mark Riley, you're up first All in right. the category. <sighs> of animated while starring on a hugely popular sitcom who lent their voice as annie hughes in 1999's the iron giant uh can you repeat the question please while starring on a hugely popular sitcom who lent their voice as anna hughes in 1999's the iron giant jennifer aniston that's correct <laughs> all right one point for mark riley Get right in. out of the gate uh, comes yep. mark riley i like that in the category of action adventure what actress plays Liam Neeson's wife in the Taken films? Oh, uh... Five, four, three, Why I'm blanking. two, one. I'm blanking. Looking for Famke Jensen. Yeah. Famke Jensen. God damn. All right, in the category of horror, category of horror films, you'll find Dr. Sam Loomis in which horror franchise? Halloween. That's correct. Correct. All right. All right, so then All right. Mark Riley with a fast two points. Two points out of a possible three. All right, John Roca, <laughs> we go to you yeah. for your first questions. I forfeit. No, yes. <laughs> Under the category of animated. I nosed. Who voiced Mushu in the 1998 film Mulan? I'm sorry? Mulan? Yes. Eddie Murphy. Correct. Yeah. All right. Four horsemen cheering from him in the crowd. Your second question under the category of action adventure. Which action flick paired Arnold Schwarzenegger with John Leguizamo? Oh my God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Five, four. I don't know, the sixth day. Ooh. We were looking for collateral damage. Oh yeah, I never saw that one. All right. All right, for your third question and the potential tie under the category of horror. Which Midwestern state was the setting for the original Nightmare on Elm Street? Oh, shit. Five, four, three, two. Missouri. We're looking for Ohio. Ah. Very difficult question. All right, back to Mark Riley. Fuck. Category of war films. In which war do the events of the film Fury take place? World War II. That's correct. Correct. All right, Mark Riley jumping out to a three to one lead here. In the category of Oscars, Tilda Swinton won a Best Supporting Actress trophy for her role in what 2008 film? Five, four, three. Michael Clayton. That's correct. Correct. Mm. Wow. He took his time. He, he his thought time. it out. He processed he it out and time. came up with it. All right, Mark Riley, in the category of box office, what was the domestic top grossing movie in the Bourne franchise? Was it A, The Bourne Identity, B, The Bourne Supremacy, C, The Bourne Ultimatum, or D, Jason Bourne? The Bourne Ultimatum. That's correct. 
Wow. Wow. 5-1 going in. So Mark Riley had a big first round here. Now it goes back to the outlaw. All right. Mr. Roca. Yeah. Under the category of war, Ugh. who played POW and former Olympian Louis Zamperini in 2014's Unbroken? Jack O'Connell. Correct. Wow, big. Roca scoring some points. No hesitation there. No, that was good. He needs a little bit of a comeback here. Under the category of Oscars, Kate Winslet won a Best Actress statue for what 2009 film? Five, four, oh, Jesus Christ. three, two, one. Uh, uh, little children. We're looking for the reader. Oh. Your final question in round one. Under the category of box office, what DC movie currently has the all-time high in domestic box office? Is it A, The Dark Knight, B, The Dark Knight Rises, mm. C, Batman, the 1989 version, or D, Suicide Squad? Oh, Jesus. Ah, uh, crap. Uh, five. Suicide four. Squad. We were looking for A, The Dark Knight. Wow, all right. Well, going into round two, Riley has a pretty good lead, 5-2, going into the second round. All right, round two works like this. The competitors will spin the wheel, and Sasha Pro River there comes out is. with the Jason mask. Um, and you, they will spin the wheel. <laughs> and if they land on a category they do not like, they can spin again, unless, of course, it lands on opponent's choice. Each question is worth two points apiece, unless the opponents would choose for a multiple choice. Then it goes down to one. You can steal from your opponents in this round. Mark Riley, you are up five to two. Would you like to go first or second? I'm going to go first. All right. All Please right. spin the wheel. He has control right now. He wants to keep control. There's the spin. And it lands on... Spinner's, Spinner's choice. choice. Wow. Star Wars. Star, Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> wow. Go in. Not for surprisingly. The shot. All right. Mark Riley, you're up five to two, and your category is Star Wars. Question one: What command did Emperor Palpatine employ to turn the clone troopers against the Jedi in Revenge of the Sith? Order sixty-six. That's correct. All right. Question two. Why did Luke want to go to Tashi Station in New Hope? To pick up some power converters. <laughs> That's correct. correct. All right. Question number three. In The Phantom Menace, Anakin has a young human friend on Tatooine. What is his name? Multiple choice. Is it A, Dak, B, Zan Wessel, C. Kitster, D. Quinlan Voss. Can you repeat, please? Is it A. Dak, B. Zan Wessel, C. Kitster, D. Quinlan Voss? Uh, C. That's correct. Yes. Kitster. And your final question in the category of Star Wars: Where does Princess Leia falsely tell Grand Moff Tarkin the Rebel base is located in A New Hope? Dantooine. Correct. Correct. So after the second round, oh. that spinner's choice clearly going Riley's way, 12-2. Roka needs a good spin here. All right, Roka. Round and round. And it lands on Oscars. Oscars. Interesting. What will he do Roka here? He does camera. have the choice to respin again yeah. if he wants. He's thinking He's about thinking it. I'm going to have to give you a five count, John. Five, four, three. Yeah, all right. You're going to go for it? All right, he's going to go Oscars. for Oscars. All right. John Roca, your first question in category two. Name the film that saw actress Gwyneth Paltrow win the Best Actress Oscar. Shakespeare in Love. That's correct. Correct. Yes! By the way, by the way, better than Saving Private Ryan. I don't care what anybody says. Ooh, boo. <laughs> Deserved its best picture. And had him on his side right off there. And uh, and I actually agree with John Roca. Boo! All right. Your next question. Under the category of Oscars. 
Name the film that upset Avatar to win Best Picture at the 2010 Oscar ceremony. Uh, the Hurt Locker. Correct! Wow, look at Stroka. Stroka fighting back tough. Fighting back. Your third question You're right. under Oscars. Who won the Best Actress Oscar for her role in the 1984 film Places in the Heart? Sally Field. Wow, Correct! Look at Roca. There's that Roca we know. Roca fighting back tough, not going down quietly. All right. Your final question under the category of Oscars. What is the name of the killer that Hannibal Lecter assists the FBI in identifying in Silence of the Lambs? Buffalo Bill. Correct! And just like that. He runs the table in round two. And it looked like he was in trouble. There he is, right back in it. All right, round three, final mm -hmm. round here. The competitors will be able to pick from one to 20. And their first point, excuse me, their first question worth one point. Second one, three points. Third one, five points. Mark Riley, you yep. are in the lead. Choose three numbers from one to 20. Five, seven, 19. Five, seven, 19. Thank you. John Rocha. Uh, 12, 14, and 16. All right. John Rocha, you yeah. chose for your one-point question the number 12. That gives you the category of war. Who directed Tom Cruise in the war thriller Valkyrie? Oh, Jesus. He did not direct that film. Christ. Uh, Brian Singer. Correct wow. for one point. Wow, all right. Thank God. Roka. Roka fighting. All right. Mr. Roka, for your three-point question, you chose the number 14, yeah. which gives you the category of comic book movies. Oh. For the lead, in which movie is the title character aided by Abe Sapien? A merman with psychic powers, and Liz Sherman, a woman with pyrokinesis. Say what? <laughs> Could you repeat that again, please? Sure, because I'm sure repeating it is going to help you. <laughs> In which movie is the title character aided by Abe Sapien, a merman with psychic powers, and Liz Sherman, a woman with pyrokinesis? Uh, Hellboy. <laughs> Correct! <laughs> For three points! All Apparently right. it did help him to wow. repeat the question. All right, so now John John Roca now. I don't buy that for a fucking it is. second. You a knew that shit. 14, 12. Jesus Christ. And now Steve Carell is up. We, we yeah. have... All right, so now we have Mark Riley. He picked category five, which was Oscar movies. Who starred as Karen Blixen in the Best Picture winner, Out of Africa? Meryl Streep. That's correct. Wow. 14, 14, 13. All right, Mark Riley for the lead. You picked category seven. Category is classics. In Midnight Cowboy, John Voight stars as Joe Buck alongside who? as Ratso Rizzo. Dustin Hoffman. And Mark Correct. Riley. 16, 14. Back to John Roca for the five pointer. John Roca has been so here familiar. before. The five pointer, either sending it to back to Mark Riley or Mark Riley going up to play either Dan Merle again or Mark Ellis for the championship. Here is your question, John Roca. Roca, for your five point question, you pick the number 16 which gives you the category of rom-coms. <laughs> Not a rom-com. Ben Stiller and Malin Ackerman have an ill-fated marriage in which movie? The Heartbreak Kid. Correct! Oh, there you go. 19, by the way, 16, by the way, I love that movie. Final a pleasure, that movie. question. Final question Final here. Final question this is comes it. down to this. Both on the top of their game right now, this is unbelievable for your five pointer. Mark Riley in the category of 90s movies for the win. Who played Flipper, the leading man in 1991's Jungle Fever? F 
five, four. Denzel Washington. And your winner, advancing to the title match, the Outlaw, John Roga! Wesley Snipes. We were looking was for the Wesley answer. Snipes. Great what a guess. Match. Great, Great guess. guess. Wow. Two matches with these two, two big matches. That's the best Mark Riley's played since 2014. That was incredible. Oh, look at us. Sign of class there. So, John Roca finally getting his title shot against either Dan Merle or Mark Ellis. All right, let's go straight to Sasha Pro Raver, who's talking to the winner, John Roca, and the unfortunate loser tonight, Mark Riley. All right, thank you, gentlemen. I am standing here now with the winner, Roca. Yeah. Minutes ago, you were here as the loser. Yeah. How does it feel, man? It's, uh, it's relief more than anything else. Riley is an incredible competitor, and I love him to death. To beat him again, it took everything I had and a couple of lucky breaks. Running that table in the Oscars when I was completely dead in the water. After he got in Star Wars, I think for sure, I thought I was just gonna get it wiped out. Why did you hesitate? Why weren't you sure whether or not you wanted to go with that category? Because it seems like Oscars would be a slam dunk for you. I think and I, it was. Uh, yeah, well, I think frazzled from the team match and also messing up that uh, 2009, the reader with Kate Winslet, I didn't know how obscure the questions were going to be. Mm. And I didn't know what I was going to situation, where I was going to be. Oh, <laughs> oh, all right, thank you. Clark Worms oh, yeah. in. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought that was about to be a challenge. Thank you, Wolves I thought Steel. Clark was oh. calling in for our I, no, challenge. I like that. I like that. Oh, I, for a second really I was like, it. oh, it's already going no, down. I'll take it. But here's interesting. Yes. That is not a challenge from Clark Wolf no, because you have been whining forever yeah. about wanting the title shot. Well, well, sir, you have it. Yeah. So now what? Here's the thing. You, when you speak things into action, into the universe, things happen. If you commit, you focus, and you fight, even when you're down. I was down. He got Star Wars. No business winning. I fought back and won, and that's what it takes. You speak things into the universe, things can happen. I don't have a belt around me now, but I have a shot for another one. And we're gonna come back, Nose tonight, and get the tag team belts as well. Four Horsemen's gonna ride. We're gonna ride through this whole tournament. Trust me on that. So Roger Moore was your downfall yeah. last time, and this time, Wesley Snipes is your salvation, as he is for us all. Lead. Please. And I am here with Mark Riley. This is kind of a shock, am I right? Ah, no, Roca's a, th th this guy, every time brings it and man i thought i had him but that last question you know what i have to say about jungle fever hmm. fuck that movie <laughs> fuck that movie you heard damn it here spike lee damn it fuck that movie it was a gap in my knowledge and it cost me the game what can i say well when you heard 90s movies were you concerned or did you think like oh no, i was alive in the 90s 90s movies is one of my strong suits but there are gaps and like i said jungle fever i haven't seen it i know there's a little controversy towards the uh about the casting, I think at the time, some, as uh, most people are pointing out now, they knew it, and so they're telling me, of course, that I blew it. But, and everybody on the internet, I'm sure, yeah, didn't know it, didn't it's know okay. it. It's okay, it's okay, but it. you know what you did know and had no problem with? When you got that spinner's choice and you got to say the words Star Wars. It, you know what? I was going for the kill and uh, saw Star Wars, it made it back on the wheel. I took it. And let me tell you, Roca said that once that happened, he thought this was over. He thought it was done. I thought I had him. He was checking out. But you know what? That's the thing about Roca, the outlaw. He's good. He can come back. This is he's he's a beast. So you know what? I can beat him. It just it 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 all depends on the questions and that wheel. And you saw it here. Well, now that we have you in this position, where would you like to go from here? Who do you want to see next? Who do you want to take on? Where is your road to redemption? You know, it doesn't matter. I'm enjoying the hell out of this league. We got some great competitors, Bibiani and Draco. Look at the outlaw. Can't wait to see Dan and Ellis because it's all going to set the stage. I'm always going to be a contender. Yeah, you are. Anybody who's going to take me on is going to be fearful, and that's what I love. I'm going to come back. Don't worry. I'm going to get some wins. I'm coming back. Doesn't matter where. That's right. Yodi's coming back, and right now we got Ellis and Merle. It's going down. Back Woo! to you guys. All right, so how about that? You hear from both Roca and Riley. John Roca finally getting that title shot against the winner of the title match tonight. Riley has nothing to be ashamed of. What a match he played tonight. Oh, that was absolutely incredible. He, like, he ran the table. He did so well in that first round. Came out blazing. Five out of the first possible six. But if the other guy keeps getting questions right, there's not much you can do. It really isn't. And Roca came back. I think Roca was playing with him a little bit. He kept doing the, oh, I don't know if I got this one. And he clearly knew a lot of those. But the fact he's a showman. We know he's a showman. And now 2006. 
2017 might be his year because 2016 loses the titles, but he gets the title shot. And that's what we're going to have to look forward to. Which John Roca are we going to see going in to the title shot and against who? Are we going to see the Roca with that shaken confidence, the one that stumbles a little bit like he did in title fights with the tag team belts? Or are we going to see the John Roca that we saw here tonight that takes his time, is focused, and put up the right answers just when you think he's going to get it wrong? Well, he's standing now at 5-2 and two as he awaits the winner of the match we have going up tonight. And there is a lot of story with this one. Here you go. Set they ever came across Mark Ellis. I'm not coming for any belts. I'm keeping this belt. This belt is mine. friendship if you want to show everybody in the studio the oh, poster wow. I got you. Uh, he's, most we've seen Ellis. he's coming out to his kind of baby carrot song. Look at him carrying that belt reminding the world he is already a champion in this league. That's right. Second year in a row, he's won the ultimate showdown, and now he's coming for Dan Merle. Mark Ellis is going up against Merle. Dan Merle is like any of the, uh, these other little sourpuss monkey faces sitting around here. And the winner, Taylor. Dangerous Dan Merle. It's an honor to be in the ring with you. Two movie geeks going off on their knowledge but as we all know by now you either know the shit or you don't and i know the shit the second nightmare on elm street film uh it was nightmare on elm street 2 answer the dream watcher and your winner Dan Merle is one of the best screen junkies. In fact, he is my favorite screen junkies. Actually, Nick Mundy is my favorite screen junkie. Have you guys seen Nick? Marion Ravenwood. And your winner! He took the belt from my Wolves of Steel partner, Mark Riley. So I feel like not only do I need to bring the belt home for Collider, I need to bring it back for Wolves of Steel. I don't, I am gonna take a guess. I don't know the answer, Anthony Hopkins. And your winner, and still, movie trivia, Schmodown, champion of the world, dangerous, Dan Merle. When he 
championship's on the line, I'm going to bring it. So I don't care if it's Amy Signor, I don't care if it's you, I don't care if it's Ellis or Harloff or Mance. When the championship's on the line, I come to play. This is my Man, it is heated in there right now. I had the opportunity to call the first three matches of the Schmodown Spectacular. And now it's time to go into battle against somebody who I consider a good friend. I'm, I love the Screen Junkies guys, and Dan Merle certainly deserves to be in the top of the mountain. But he's about to get knocked off. It's been a while since I stepped in the ring. I said I wanted to meet the best, and the best is who I'm meeting today. I'm not just meeting the guy who's the best at the game. I'm meeting one of the guys who invented the game, and I'm going to show him that it's not his game anymore. It's my game. I might not be as loud or as boisterous or as ridiculous as a lot of the other guys, but I know how to get inside somebody's skull. Dan Merle's a tough one to penetrate, but I know how to intimidate. I know how to facilitate a victory for me because I'm going to be the one holding this belt. Baby Carrots, Mark Ellis, I don't care if you created the game. I don't care if you wrote the questions. I am still going to beat you. It is not going to be a happy holiday for you, my friend. Ho, ho, ho. That schmo, schmo, schmo is going down today. You've been a great champion. You've represented this young show very well. But now it's time to give the belt back to Collider. It's Christmas, buddy. And Santa Claus is coming to town. Look at what Dan Merle has done. Um, there's, if it hadn't been that he competed in the team matches last year with Riley, he'd clearly be Rookie of the Year. He's going for Player of the Year right now. Yeah. I mean, this guy has four wins with the technical knockout rule. He's got three knockouts. Right? And if he wins tonight, that's five straight victories without a loss. That ties Riley. If he wins tonight, that's the most title defenses with two. He clearly is the best at the game right now. When you, when you look at a name like Mark Ellis going into this year, you didn't really take it seriously. I know I didn't at first. I thought he might be able to pull out a couple of interesting wins. Not just interesting wins. He has gone out there and beat some incredibly big names, including winning the big tournament, taking out John Roca in the finals to earn this title shot. Dan Merle's got his work cut out for him. Oh, of course he does. Look, Mark uh, Mark Ellis has he won he won the 2015 tournament with myself. He won the 2016 tournament by himself. He is the former team champion. He's the ultimate Schmodown champion. The guy has also in this new league has never lost a match. Four straight victories, and to be fair, his only loss coming against a little evil, but he got every question right, and it was during the betting round. It, was it really a loss? It's debatable. Well, it's an interesting thing when you look at Dan Merle, too, because I have an interesting kind of vestige in this match, if you will. Dan Merle, the very first movie trivia showdown match over here on Collider was Dan Merle against me. And you know what? He has been on a roll ever since. He's almost looked unstoppable. Can he carry it into this tonight? All right, well, we're about to find out. Here's the tale of the tape between the two. There is the number one contender, Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. Obviously, Star Wars is a strength. 80s movies, comedies, and cracking jokes. And then next <laughs> to him, you got Dangerous. Dan Merle, whose strengths are Oscar movies, Spielberg movies, and putting up with Andy's loud yell. Um, <laughs> so th those are all the things that we got going, and I am ready to get this match started. No more waiting. Let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main event of the Showdown Spectacular. Five rounds. For the undisputed Schmodown Championship of the World. Introducing first, representing Collider and the Schmo's No, with a record of five wins, one defeat. He is the 2015 Ultimate Schmodown winner. The 2016 Ultimate Schmodown winner, the former team champion, and the number one contender, Mark Baby Carrots Allen! And season's oh, greetings to everybody! Oh, look at the 
look at him. Handing out baby carrots to all the good boys and girls. There he is. He is in a festive spirit. He is oh. throwing out carrots. He's throwing carrots out. I like that. Very nice. Oh, baby he carrots. He is ready to go. He is the number one contender. He has earned his way here. He is ready. Santa Claus could walk out with a real gold belt if it goes oh. his way. I believe he has Mark Riley under that coat. Uh, <laughs> you two have been real good boys this year. <laughs> and his opponent. Representing Screen Junkies with a record of four wins, no defeats. He is the reigning movie fight champion and the reigning, defending, undefeated, undisputed movie trivia showdown champion of the world. Dangerous, Dan Morrow. And here he comes. Oh, look at that, the new, the world, new world order. order. I love it. Here he I comes. I love it. Look at that. Coming in, the champ is here. I'll give it a nice nod to the. Look at that. Oh, what a nice. You gotta nice love the gotta shirt. Like, oh, well done. Coming in up. with that belt, he has been absolutely unstoppable this year. Will he hit a road bump with Mark Ellis or will he continue his glorious Merle-like reign? We're sure gonna find out in just a second here as we start. Now, to be fair, I have seen the comments. I have read comments. Maybe his team partner shouldn't be calling the match. Maybe that shouldn't be happening. Well, to be fair, I'm gonna step out. I'm gonna step out of this match and I'm gonna let someone else call the match. And who better than the classiest individual on the planet? She is, has been a buzzsaw in this league, quite possibly the rookie of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, Classy Clark Wolf! <laughs> so good having you here, Clark. Thank Congrats, Rail come here. I'm so glad you're calling this Thank match you, with me. You know, making sure that we call this down the line. You're gonna have to bounce me out because I absolutely hate Mark Ellis. <laughs> So, <laughs> who hates Santa, John? Come on. Sit on no, my knee and tell me what you'd like for Christmas, John. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Maybe this whole time you just needed to sit on Mark Ellis's lap, John. Oh, if I had a nickel every time he said that to somebody around the office. All right. It's time for us to get down to it. We're going to get into round number one. Here's how round one works. Each competitor will be asked six questions from predetermined categories. Each question is worth one point. There is no multiple choice. There is no stealing in this round at all. Dangerous Dan Murrow, you are the reigning champion. You have the choice. Would you like to go first or second? Well, I'd like to thank Christian for putting two people that I defeated up there as the arbiters <laughs> of my heavyweight title match. Uh, I will go first. All right, you go first. Mark Ellis, you have the option. Would you like to take questions from category one or qu category two? Hmm, John, one's naughty, <laughs> one's nice. I will answer questions from category one. All right. I literally have to play Santa Claus. <laughs> my, my beard is actually a comb over from the chest hair, so it comes up. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Dan Murrow, your first question comes under the category of comedy. What 90s character loves snack packs, Donkey Kong, and his third grade teacher? Oh, uh, Billy Madison. Correct for one point. <laughs> Always good to start strong. Your second question, under the category of directors. Who directed 1996 Mission Impossible? Brian De Palma. Correct for another point. Your third question, under the category of taglines. What 2000 Jim Carrey comedy featured the tagline, from gentle to mental? Me, myself, and Irene. Perfect three for the first for three, three questions. He's a champion for a reason, John. All hey, right. right. You're fucking blitzing over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Santa, and I'm going to be asking you your questions. Thank you, Clark. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, in the category of comedy, 
What 2006 sequel features main characters named Dante and Randall and a fictional fast food restaurant called Movies? Clerks 2. That's correct. All right, Santa Ellis in the category of directors. Who directed The Greatest Show on Earth? The Greatest Show on Earth. Five, four, three. Stanley Kubrick. That is incorrect. We yep. were looking for Cecil B. DeMille. Ah. <laughs> uh, all right. In the cat. <laughs> Are you done, audience? Just kidding. Um, okay. In the category of taglines, what 2003 comedy's tagline was? All the fun of college, none of the education. Old school. That is correct. All right, the two competitors getting five out of the possible six questions. Impressive. Dan, we move back to you. For your fourth question, under the category of animated, what is the name of Mrs. Potts' son who was turned into a cup in Disney's Beauty and the Beast? Chip. Correct. <laughs> Your fifth question, under the category of drama. Who plays Mr. Holland in Mr. Holland's opus? Richard Dreyfuss. Correct. <laughs> wow, perfect score for Dan so far. Your final question in round number one, under the category of fantasy sci-fi. Who played the Elven King in Mirkwood in The Hobbit Trilogy? Oh. Lee Pace? Correct! Woo! To run the board in round number one. That is a perfect round number one for the defending champion, Dan Merle. All right, Santa Ellis. In the category of animated, what is Aladdin's first official wish? Oh, man, I know what mine would be. <laughs> <laughs> I think his first official wish. Five, four. Let's go with freedom. <laughs> that is incorrect. It is to be a prince. Mm. Uh, all right. In the category of dramas, on what historic battlefield did Denzel Washington give an inspirational speech to his mixed race high school football team in Remember the Titans? That was Gettysburg. That is correct. Wow, nice one. Nice job. And finally, in the category of fantasy sci-fi, a young boy accidentally joins a band of dwarves as they jump through time looking for treasure in what movie? Time Bandits. That's correct. correct. Ah. Oh. All right. Oh. 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 All right, after round number one, we have a close match, six to four, and now we move on to round number two. And we're gonna have Sasha Pro Raver bring out the Wheel of Destiny, or death, or that fucking wheel, as Clark calls it off. Yes, I, always. Whoa. 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 Oh. And we have the new number one contender, John Roca, bringing out the wheel. Oh boy. <laughs> He's kind of playing a little mind games here. A lot of stuff has happened for John Roca today, John. <laughs> All right, here's how this works in round number two. Each competitor will spin the wheel. When they land on a category, they will have the choice to either take that category or pass and spin it a second time, unless they land on spinner's choice, in which case they can choose any category on the board, or the dreaded opponent's choice, where their opponent will get to choose their category for them. If the competitors answer the question without going to multiple choice, the points will be worth two. If, however, they do choose to go to multiple choice, the points will be worth one. You can steal in this round. Dangerous Dan Murrow, you currently hold the lead. Would you like to spin first or second? I'll go first. All right, Dan has chosen to spin first. 
He spins the wheel. Good spin. It's still going. It lands Ooh, on Brad, Brad Pitt, Pitt films. This is interesting. <laughs> Whoa. Is that he feeling is, confident? Uh, that is feast or famine for me. He's been a bad boy this year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna uh I'm gonna take my chances and take another spin. Alright, he's off right. to take another okay. spin. Playing it Here we safe, go. Now he must he... take whichever category he lands on now. And will he come to And it will it? be Spinner's oh, Choice! Oh my gosh! It shut that decision paid off. This is huge, John. This is huge. Oh wow, there's 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 two on there that I'm eyeing. It's between Spielberg and comic book movies. Ugh. We're gonna have to give you a five count, Dan. Uh, five. <laughs> not going with. Me. I will go with uh, comic book movies. He's comic taking comic book, book movies. movies. All right, I will be asking Dangerous Dan Merle his questions. Dan, in the category of comic book movies, your first question. After which 80s TV star did Star-Lord name his ship? I'll take that to multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Christina Applegate, B, Heather Locklear, C, Tiffany Amber Thiessen, or D, Alyssa Milano? D. That is correct. For one point. All right. Question number two. What actress was cast as Mary Jane Watson in the Amazing, amazing Spider-Man 2, but was ultimately cut from the film? Shailene Woodley. That is correct. Correct Ooh. for two points. Wow. Question number three in the category of comic book movies. What is the name of Batman's motorcycle in the Dark Knight. The Bat Pod. That is correct. Wow. That's what I call the sleigh around the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Question number four. In 2007's Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, Ooh. the Silver Surfer is a harbinger of what evil entity? Galactus. Correct, and Dangerous Dan Merle once again proving why he holds that belt. So the score stands now, Dan Merle 13, Mark Ellis 4. Mark Ellis needs a really good round here to stay in this thing. Mark, it is your turn to spin that wheel. Thank you, John. You know he's hoping for sports if he can get it. Round it goes, he lands on opponent's choice. Oh, what a turn no. of events. Merle gets wow. Spinner's Choice for himself, and Mark spins a punch choice. Now Mark has the choice to pick any category off that board, and Mark must take the, that category. You know what? I grant wishes to kids all over the world. What's one more? Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Dan Merle is very happy with what's coming down his chimney this year. Uh, yeah, no, I, uh, the thing is, this guy's, uh, this guy's no, no, got no weak points, so I just have to stay away from his strong points. What are the X factors? Are Christmas movies on there? <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> All right, Dan, we're going to have to give you a count of five. I'm going to go with the one that I avoided, and I'm going to say Brad Pitt. All right, All right. Take Brad oh. Pitt films. <laughs> the answer is a six-pack of abs. <laughs> Mark Ellis, your first question under the category of Brad Pitt movies. Who played Pitt's best friend, Eddie, in 2005's Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Vince Vaughn. Correct for two that points. Correct. <laughs> Needed that. Your second question. In what film does Brad Pitt play an on-the-run IRA terrorist that is hiding out in the home of a New York cop? The Devil's Own. Correct! Wow. Racking up the points that he desperately needs right now. Your third question. Who played the romantic interest of Brad Pitt's character in Legends of the Fall? You're gonna need a multiple choice, John. All right, is it A, Gwyneth Paltrow, B, Julia Ormond, C, Kim Basinger, D, Michelle Pfeiffer, I'd go with the one I want to be Mrs. Claus, Julia Ormond. Correct! Oh, there we go. There we go. Your fourth question. 
What is Brad Pitt's character's name in the Oceans series? Do you need uh, both names or you just need the first Just the first name. Five. Four. Give me multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Rusty? B, Rick? C, Randy? We need to get Rusty a girlfriend. Rusty it is! Wow. All right, after two rounds now, Dangerous Dan Merle holds a slim lead, 13 to 10, over Mark Santa Ellis. We now head into round number three, which is the wager round. Here's how this works. Because Dan Merle's in the lead, he will spin the wheel one more time. That will give the competitors a category. One question will be selected from that category. Before the question is asked, the competitors will have a chance to wager between zero and three points. They will write those points down on a board and then be asked the same question, at which time they will write down their answers. Correct answer will give them the points that they wagered. However, an incorrect answer will cost them the points that they have wagered. Dan Merle, you are in the lead. You will spin the wheel. Nice monologue, John. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. The question the competitors will have is sci-fi fantasy. Wow. Will be the question for both of the competitors. At this point now, gentlemen, you know what the category is. You have the option now to choose a wager number between zero and three. Write down your wager now and then hand your boards to Natasha. That's Sasha. <laughs> Sorry, Sasha. <laughs> to Sasha. be fair, you have a mask on. <laughs> All right, she's collected those, she's bringing those over. All right, you guys got the category of sci-fi fantasy. You have submitted your wagers. Here is your question. In the movie, I, Robot, what is the name of the sentient robot voiced by Alan Tudyk? Five, four, three, two, pens down. All right, Mark, you're behind right now. We're going to go to your answer first. What I did you say? I loved Tudyk as Dale. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, that is that is incorrect, and the number of points that you wagered is Mark Ellis wagered one, one point. point, so you will lose one point. Over to you, Dangerous Dan Merle. Your answer was I loved Alan Tudyk as Herbie. Ooh. <laughs> also incorrect. The answer was Sunny. You Sunny. you wagered two points. So despite getting the answer in that round wrong, Mark Ellis actually caught up by a point. Just it's got a scored. little sunnier for me. The score is now 11 to 9 as we move on to round number four. Here's how this works. A question will be asked to both competitors. The first competitor to buzz in will have three seconds to answer. A correct answer will give them one point. An incorrect answer or going over the three second limit will lose them one point. There is no stealing in this round. Gentlemen, are you ready? Yes. Sure. <clears throat> Question one. In Red Dawn, a group of Colorado teens fights back against invading Soviet forces. What do they call? Yeah. Wolverines? Correct. Correct. <laughs> I was going to go with Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Question two. Which U.S. state provides the setting for the film Fifty First Dates? Hawaii. Correct. Wow, back and oh, forth. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Question three, who composed the score for Tron Legacy? Daft Punk. That is correct. Wow! Ho, ho, ho. There are no Bing Crosby. <laughs> Question four, what position did Gina Davis's character play in a... Catcher. That is correct. Ooh. <laughs> Back and forth continues. Ooh. Unbelievable. This is such a Oh, this is such a good match. All right, question 5, the final question in the speed round category. Who directed the contemporary film noir classic Chinatown? Yeah. Roman Polanski. That is correct. Correct. <laughs> After Four rounds. Wow. It is still within punching distance. Oh my gosh. Dangerous Dan Murrow leads 14 to 11. Only three points separate them as we head into the all important final fifth 
round. Unbelievable. This is just crazy. But, you know, I think what we're seeing is there's a damn good reason why Dan has a belt, and there is a damn good reason why Mark Ellis is up there challenging him for it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, here's how round number five works, ladies and gentlemen. Each competitor will pick three numbers between one and 25. The first number they pick will be a one point question for them. The second number they pick will be a three point question. The third number they pick will be a five point question. Dangerous Dan Merle, pick your three numbers. I'm gonna go with one, eight, and 16. Mr. Mark Ellis. Let's go with three, nine, and 14. Mark, you currently trail by three points. You will go first. Mark Ellis, for your one point question in the category of sci-fi fantasy, name the actor who played a human in Planet of the Apes in 1968 and an ape in Planet of the Apes in 2001. I believe that was Charlton Heston. That is correct. Correct. Good movie, that 2001 version. Oh, <laughs> so good. good. You now only trail by two points. Definitive. All right. Uh, for your three-point question, you chose category nine, which is classics. Oh, boy. Who did Louise Fletcher play in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Nurse Ratched. She has been a very Whoa. naughty girl, and that she is correct. Takes the lead for the first time in this match. All right, Dan, for your one point question, you astutely chose the number one, which gives you the category of sports. No. <laughs> what was the name of the hockey coach that coached the Ducks in Mighty Ducks? Gordon Bombay! Correct! Right. We have a tie game. All right, Dan, for your three-point question and the potential lead, you chose the number eight, which gives you the category of family films. <laughs> <laughs> Who played the role of Carol Brady in the Brady Bunch movie? Shelly Long. Correct for the lead! Oh boy. All right, it comes down now. <laughs> we go back to Mark Ellis. Here's his situation. If he answers his five point question correctly, he will take the lead and put the pressure on Dan Merle. If he misses this question, Dan Merle continues his impressive streak as the champion of the movie trivia showdown. Oof. All right. Uh, Mark Ellis, you chose the number 14. For your five point question in the category of musicals. Just want all you kids to know you're still getting your presents this year. <laughs> in the category of musicals, what fairy tale character does Anna Kendrick play in Into the Woods? Cinderella. That is correct! correct! Unbelievable! Wow. I... Unbelievable! Ma Mark Ellis might have been a good boy this year too. Jeez Louise. This, this is exactly what you wanted. The title match, it has come down to the last question. Oh my goodness. Currently, Mark Ellis holds a two point lead. However, Dangerous Dan Merle has his five pointer coming up. Dan Merle. For your five point question and the win, you chose the number 16. That gives you the category of coming of age movies. Who plays the two theater instructors at the summer camp in Wet Hot American Summer? Bradley Cooper and Amy Poehler. And your winner, and still undefeated, undisputed, movie trivia showdown, champion of the world, dangerous, Dan Morrow. Wow. Unbelievable. Incredible. Mark Ellis.
Lewis scores 20 points, one of the highest scores ever scored in the movie Trivia Show Showdown, but Dan Merle pulls out 23 to hang on to that belt. I think this is exactly what you want from a championship match. That was neck and neck basically the whole time. I am so impressed with both of them. That came down to the wire. That's unbelievable. All right, well, let's go back and hear from the reigning and defending successfully champion Dangerous Dan Merle. That was incredible, Ooh. Dan. Wow. You got one question wrong. Wait, that really? That's it. Oh, you got wow. one question wrong. That was Herbie. a hell of a match. Herbie, I, I think I got one. This might have missed one in the, I don't know. That uh, was amazing. Ellis is a hell of a competitor. And I knew going in that, uh, I, I knew that one of us was going to lose to the other, and neither one of us was going to beat the other one, if, if that makes any sense. Ellis, uh, right to the end, uh, he could be wearing this just as easily as I could, but uh, I knew it was going to be go down to the end. It did. Uh, what a match. You're a very gracious winner, but I kind of feel like you might have to retire before anybody else can take that belt from you. I, You know, I... I, I said that I'm going to keep doing this as long as I keep winning, and uh, I, I'm still winning, so I guess it keeps going. I guess I keep rolling. Okay, let's be honest. Are you really scared of Roka? Come on! Personally or again in, yeah, in this competition? Listen, John Roka is uh, John Roka's got a great trivia mind, except for the little you know bestman here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, personally, am I scared of him? No. I mean, he's he's got a lot of talk, but uh, you know, I, I don't see him with any of these. I don't see him with any hardware on his shoulder. No hardware. As of today, nothing. No. Uh, so you know, it's, it's, it's still a trivia the mind, new sure. Merle order. It's the new this Merle is the order. new Merle order, new Merle order, and it is going to be very difficult. Are there any categories you feel like you can't really tackle? Is there anything that you think is your soft spot that you think maybe a competitor could take? A, uh oh, I, incoming. Uh -oh. Oh, oh god, boy. I thought I smelled I see some something. hardware coming. In. I oh, see some hardware. Man. Hello, gentlemen. Oh, I like this me, hardware. Let me this ask nice. you something here. Yeah. One belt is cool. But what about three belts? Like I that? like those belts. Those like are good. We are like those we're, belts. we're the yeah. lion's den here. The lion's den? Yeah. Okay. Now, right. John Roca, mm -hmm. he can get you 20% off on a Back to the Future shirt at Universal Studios. Okay. But we'll get you. Uh -huh. And you, we'll make, make sure you keep that championship belt here. We win. I mean, These I guys are doing this here. It, it makes sense. Yeah. This is a marriage. Where the lions then? I'll see his Back to the Future shirts and give you free comic books signed by their writer. Free comic books. That's pretty good. That's we're pretty asking good you. Right, what are we asking Dan Merrill right now? Listen, we're Screen Junkie's brother in here. Um, there's only one choice to make here. You got to join me with these titles, and let's 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 just. Take it over. The well, new moral orders. Well, let me ask you this: Where do you, where do you, where do you stand on John Roca? You stand on him. We yeah, yes, thank you. Right yeah, like a rug. I mean, he's you know, a glutton for punishment. You guys, I, I'm pretty busy. I got a lot going on, but I will say, it's been a long time. It's been a really long time since I went to Sunday school. But one of the lessons that I do remember is that Daniel belongs in the lion's den. So yeah, let's do this. Poof. Let's do it. Let's do it! That's a poof right there. Let's do it! Get out of what here! What the hell? Get off that, you idiot! Get out of here with your stuff! The lion's den. I've never heard of something so stupid in my life. The lion's den. Listen, you and me, you gotta worry about it. You gonna hold on to that belt when I face you? I don't think so. I've been working my ass off to fight Dan Merle, and now the time has come. These little pansies need to get out of here, because a man's standing here now. You wanna go? You wanna go? You need to fear me? You need to fear me, because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna study so hard. I'm gonna be so determined, so focused to beat you, Dan, because you don't fail, you don't lose, you don't mess up questions, therefore I can't. So I've come for you, man, oh, and yeah? I've worked my whole year to have my shot at the title. You realize the take way this, this works around here is that somebody beats you, and then I beat them. Oh. That's how this works around here. Look at it, you just got it. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm coming for that, and I'm coming for those two belts. I'm going to end the the interview. Back to you guys. <laughs> All right. So there you go. You hear. Now, that was unexpected that that happened with Dan Merle in that interview. I didn't see that coming. But unbelievable that we have Dan Merle, who breaks Mark Riley's record. Five wins, no defeats, two defenses. Clearly the best there is right now. Well, look, it came right down to the final. I cannot believe how tough Mark Ellis hung in there. He was trailing Great just match. by a little bit throughout, and when it counted the most, he surged at the end, took the lead twice, put all the pressure on Dan, and Dan did not get a fluff question at the end. He pulls it out. A really good, a good job by Mark Ellis, putting up a really tough fight against a defending champion right now who just seems unstoppable. All right, guys, so listen, before we get going, I do want to bring in the guy who helped me create this show from the ground up and who just kicked serious ass up there, Baby Carrots, Mark Ellis hitting the stage. There he is. Uh, listen, 
Yeah, yeah oh. come over here. Oh. Right. Dude, that was uh, that was something. Hey, uh, Santa, let's, let, can I have Mark back for a second? Oh. <laughs> oh. How, how, I mean, talk about that match real quick. Oh, man. my God. You know, there's a lot of pressure on me this time of year anyway. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> This uh, oh, th this was one of the this might be the my favorite match I've competed in yeah. simply because of the quality of the opponent. Yeah. Uh, I had a tough road to get here. I somehow got lucky enough to be in this match. It was an honor to compete against Dangerous Dan Merle, and uh, I almost got him there. All right, so question: Now we've got Dan Merle versus John Roca in 2017. You play both of them. Who do you got? Um, you know, yeah. Roca's tough to have in the league because he's very annoying. <laughs> Okay. Dan Merle is a guy that I don't think is is going to be touched in this league for a while, yeah. and I think that Roca is a big reason for that. I think that Dan Merle defeats John Roca. Wow. All right. Well, there you go. You hear from Baby Carrot. Beats the outlaw. All right, guys. So listen, what a schmodown spectacular! That was everything I hoped it was going to be. You've got this. You've got a reigning champion. You have new team champions, a new inner geekdom champion, the, a team Trek coming up around with a win, and then John Roca going up against Merle. I mean, what a great way to end this season in 2016. Yeah, and how about a hand for John Campia stepping in, helping us out. Yeah. All right. Been a real good boy this year. All right, so a lot of things that we would like you guys at home to do. Obviously, tell us about which match you like the most. What comp uh, competitors do you want to see next year? What matches do you want to see next year? Comment, like, share it, do all that stuff. Make sure you join the Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook page that you guys started. All that stuff next Next week, we are going to be doing the awards, the player of the year, the rookie of the year, match of the year. All of these things will happen next year as we take a break and gear up for 2017. What a season for John Campia, Mark Ellis, <laughs> all you guys, the reigning champ. What a spectacular. Thank you guys very much, and we'll see you next year. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.